Hello everyone, I wanted to introduce you guys to a project that I have a, somewhat of an involvement in. It's a, not my project, it's actually a friend's. He has a 1992 Lexus SC300 which he rebuilt an engine for and is going to be installing a turbo in and doing all these upgrade stuff, you know, make it all crazy and all that stuff. Um, but he's not going to be using the stock um, ECU on the car and instead he's going to go with an aftermarket one and because that involves electronics and wiring and all that stuff that's where I come in and my friends already given me the the wiring diagram manual and all that stuff here so I can look over it and figure out you know what's going to go wired where where to hook what up and all that stuff and he's also purchased the aftermarket ECU kit this project is actually started several years ago and it's just like finally now starting to take some shape and you know stuff's happening and all that stuff so a couple years ago my friend purchased the aftermarket ECU kit from DIYAutotune.com and that's actually uh, this little device here it, this came as a kit it included all the components and everything and I had to solder everything on and all that stuff and make sure that it, it was working and all that this is a, a this was a mega squirt kit that's what it's called and we purchased what is a, a mega squirt 2 except that the whole mega squirt 2 is actually not the whole kit itself but it's just this little daughter board right here the board itself is what's uh, called the uh, version 3 board the Bolling and Grippo version 3 board and this board will actually support an M MS1 the MS2 and then there's a newer MS3 the MS1 is just a, a 40 pin micro uh, Motorola I believe it was a 6800 series a, a CPU that you load the uh, firmware onto and then you can install it in the socket here we have the MS2 as I mentioned and this one here consists of this little uh, daughter board which contains the uh, the main microcontroller right there uh, with stepper driver and I think it was uh, it drive something else too I think that's a EEPROM and that's like some 7400 series logic there so that's all contained on this little board here and this uh, is what you load the firmware onto and it takes care of doing all the calculations it has the fuel maps and it does uh, you know it takes all the inputs and drives the outputs and all that stuff this this controls everything here the main board here has all the uh, other support circuitry um, it's got the voltage regulator for the CPU it's got RS-232 interface uh, chip right here that's a max uh, 232 chip uh, it's got the injector um, MOS, the, the, the MOSFETs that drive the injectors it's got the transistor that controls the ignition coil and a few other things here on um, the rest of the case we have the this is the main input output connector this is where you hook up your sensors to your injectors your ignition coil and all that stuff uh, it's got a map pressure sensor or well, map sensor right there and that's on the bottom right here that's that thing and the other side has got the RS-232 port and some status LEDs and that stuff so the cool thing is that it's a versatile little board and you can use it with like several different uh, versions of the, the CPU the only issue you're gonna have with it is that by default this uh, kit only has uh, two injector outputs and we need to drive six cylinders well there's uh, several ways you could do it with this with this board and that's uh, one of the ways was that you take one of the injector outputs and you use it to drive all six injectors at the same time but what it does is it only injects one-sixth of the required amount of fuel for, for each cylinder like twice every 720 degrees or something like that I don't remember exactly the the actual values or anything like that but you know that like I said that would do with only one of the injector outputs the other way you could do it is by doing a little modification to it and making it so that we have four injector outputs and that's actually what I was starting to do here and I mean we have four outputs but I think we would only need to use a three and that's uh, to drive you know two cylinders each but my friend decided not to do that and instead he wanted to have a full six injector outputs but the only way we could do six individual injector outputs was to upgrade this to a mega squirt three and that's what I have in this box here that I just received in the mail today 
the MS Squared 3 has eight injector outputs and it's also got eight ignition outputs so we could drive up to eight ignition coils and eight injectors all you know sequentially each one individually and with this here we'd only be able to drive all the ignition coils with like that one output because he's not using a distributor he's using coil packs so I'm gonna open up this box here and uh, show you guys what the MS3 kit consists of and how that plays into with the rest of this kit all right so here's the package and as you can see it's uh, from DIYAutoTune.com there and it's uh, based in Georgia <laughs> So my friend's the one that ordered this and sent it to my house and you know he put my name on there but then under company he put, he was trying to be funny, he put 8 equals 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 D productions and if uh, you know you can't visualize what that actually looks like I'll, I'll put it right here for you so you can see it. And uh, let's go ahead and open this up. So, woohoo! Got some ads. See, not even the boxes come with ads. Jeez. Let's see, what do we got here? We got, oh, check that out. Buy three, get one free Ziploc. Cool. And uh, some uh, DSLRs. Mm. What goes on in here? Alright, we'll set that aside. We don't need that. So, there it is. This is the casing for it because the Mega Squirt 3 requires a larger case than what we had stock with the uh, Mega Squirt 2, which is this right here. And we'll see why it needs to be taller in a moment here. But that's actually a it's a pretty cool box. The one we got here with our original kit was a uh, pretty plain and crappy. Huh. So that's that. Got more paper stuff here. This here is going to be the actual CPU card itself, and it's nice that they sent it in a little anti-static box like this. That's that's actually pretty cool. I was expecting it to come in just a anti-static bag, so that's that's pretty cool. We also ordered an extra DB37 uh, port here because the Mega Squirt 3 has this ex expansion card. Uh, that's uh, the MX3 expansion board, and that has a 37 pin DB connector that has uh, the female end here. So we needed the male end connector to plug into that and for the uh, male end here I actually have the uh, other female connector that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using both at once I believe. Here is the the sides for the for the box here, for the, the Mega Square box. So that's going to replace the other place that we had on the other box. And uh, in here, oh man, I didn't realize that this came with the TB37 connector already. So now I got two of these. Well, that kind of sucks. I didn't, I, I didn't think it came with it. I didn't remember seeing it on the website. But this is the MS3 expansion board. So this is the one that gives us all the extra inputs and outputs for the all the injectors and all that stuff. And I'm having a hard time with this. So let's just cut it open. So that connects to the MS3 board by way of this ribbon connector here and this one. So pretty cool. Well, you can see that they have a lot of shielding in there on that side on the inside there or maybe some ground power traces whatever. So this is like a, I don't know, it looks like a four layer board or something. I don't know exactly. And then we got a bunch of what are probably MOSFETs up here to drive all the injectors. So let's open up the main CPU box here. MS3 daughter board kit. There it is. So, well, that's cool. They put some uh, 
foam here to protect the pins from getting bent. The cool thing about this MS3 is that it has a USB port and it also has an SD card port. So I think you can use that to um, upload settings and stuff like that. I haven't looked at the software too well yet, so I don't know exactly what all it does. But here's the expansion port connector. So that's where that plugs in. And then here's the other one and that's where that one plugs in. So this would kind of sit up above this like that or somehow or like that I'm not sure yeah it probably have to be like that I don't actually know yet so this would bend around and connect to that and then this would connect into that that connector there so there's a main processor on this uh, MS3 board here it's a uh, Freescale it's MC 9S 12 XEP 100 MAL and then it's one has the this is like the I think that's the same stepper controller that's on the MS2 board and some another little 7400 series logic here and then another I think that's a heap ROM what's on the bottom here we got the it's probably the main clock crystal there I don't know what this little chip here is I don't know what it is off the top of my head there and then something else there's some other little 8 pin device and then there's this little bag here that comes with the uh, hardware the standoffs and screws and stuff to mount this onto our other board. And since I got to install these uh, end plates here for the new ones, I got to remove the old ones. And that's just uh, done by taking off the little standoffs here on these uh, D connectors. Let's just come off like that. And then the one on this side. And I'll be putting the new ones on. But I won't be powering this up just yet because I, I still need to see if I need to do any electrical modifications to it and everything. But at least to show you guys how this goes together. So there's the old ones. And oh crap, that thing completely came off. <laughs> okay. All right. So this one will go on there. There's the back one. So, as you can see, the whole reason it needs to be taller is because we need to have access to the the two connections on top there. And also for the MS3X that's going to go in the back here. Oh, I see. Okay. So this this thing has to go like all the way across to to the other side there and then this one here, so it doesn't just sit directly on top. I was, I was off on that one. And I gotta take these off of here. Dude, seriously, like, what's up with these connectors? The daughter board actually requires another spacer so that it sits at the proper level on the bottom board and that's what comes included in this other little bag here. So that's that. And this will attach to the bottom. It already has one in place but it comes with a second one. Let's see if we can get this on without breaking anything. Aha! And there's that. And it also comes with these standoffs and some screws and all this hardware here that's going to be used, I believe, for isolating it from from these devices there. For now, I'm just going to show how this goes together. I'm not actually going to be doing anything with it, but then that would fit into that there. And we got to get these lined up. And we just push it like a sandwich there. So. That's all that sits in there. There's the USB port and the SD card slot. I'm really liking this black anodized look. It looks pretty cool. So, and then, yep, that just connects there. And this looks like it just connects to here somehow. If I could, I don't know how they're intending us to do this. 
Uh, shoot. Well, pin one's on this side. So how the heck am I supposed to get it over like this? I guess like that. Yeah, that would work. So. That's it. Cool. So I'll be messing with that. And trying to get it all going and everything. And hopefully, if this actually does become a series, I'll be showing what we're actually doing in the car itself. And actually, if you're interested in uh, watching more of this project unfold, uh, make sure to leave it in the comment section below, and that way I know there's there's some interest in seeing this unfold, because uh, if there isn't, then I'm just not going to bother. But yeah, if you'd like to see us uh, work on this project, uh, then just uh, say so, and I'll do what I can to record our progress. So thanks uh, for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.